Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about this video. I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna be doing a haul today, except there's a twist. All the stuff that I'm gonna be showing you in this haul today is stuff that I made myself, which I'm really excited about. Um, these are things that I wanted to purchase, um, but I just decided that I could make them myself by purchasing fabric online and then just sewing it from scratch. So that's what I did. Um, the items are really random, so they don't really have a particular, I don't know, we'll get into it. Um, it's going to be kind of a try on video, but kind of not. Um, I'm just wearing like a basic outfit. Let me just show you the vibes. Okay. So I'm just wearing like a um, tank top and some shorts and I'm just planning on trying on the clothes over the top of like the shorts and um, the tank top. So the first thing that I made that I'd like to show you guys is this skater skirt. Now this is just like a flowy kind of a skater skirt. A lot of the items that I'm going to be showing you guys in this haul um, or in this things I made video are uh, made of this like mermaid material and this is inspired by the memerald or memerald mermaid slash emerald material that um, Black Milk used on their Disney collaboration. So many years ago um, Black Milk which is an Australian business it's pretty famous I don't know they had like a big um, like they were super hyped especially in like the Tumblr era um, they had a collaboration with Disney and this was um, the Piece that I picked up from that collection I picked up years later on Depop when I could afford it lol but these are leggings that are inspired by the Little Mermaid obviously and they had this beautiful metallic scale um, like kind of green print on this um, like spandexy four-way kind of stretch fabric and so I was really inspired by these pants to make more items in this style so I went on eBay and I got some green like spandex, four-way stretch kind of material stuff, and I made all of the stuff out of that material. Um, they're not exactly a match. I don't know if you can tell, but this one's a little bit brighter. Maybe this, because this is a little bit of an older item. Um, this also has more of a blue flip to it. Like, this is just straight emerald green, whereas this has a little bit of a blue reflect to it. I don't know, it's got a little bit more something, something going on. Um, but yeah, I made this skater skirt because I wanted a mermaid skater skirt. I'll try it on with you guys here. Um, it was actually the first skirt that I think I've ever like made for myself. And I'm really happy with the way it came out because it looks really good. Now, I have a secret to tell you guys. Um, and that is that I didn't hem this skirt. The reason I didn't hem it is because it didn't really feel like it needed hemming. Wait, that's the back. I made like it go high low a little bit. So it's like a little bit longer at the back just to cover like the button stuff. Um, but yeah, the reason I didn't hem this material is just because the way this fabric finishes, it doesn't really feel like it needs hemming. Like it didn't, it doesn't like run or anything. It doesn't fray at the edges. And so let me just stand on this chair. It's like an awkward angle. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like this. It's really cute. I'm obsessed with it. It even go with this top if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, it's a really cute little skater skirt. I like the flow. Um, the way I made this was I had a skater skirt that I really liked from H&M, just a plain black one, and I traced it onto the fabric, like, and I just, I kind of eyeballed the pattern, cut it out, sewed it all together, and then, of course, I also made an elastic waistband, so that was just a separate piece of elastic that I, um, covered in the material, and then I sewed the material to itself, and then sewed it at the back. It's actually really neat. Like, I'm surprised at how neat this came out. I'm really impressed with myself. I put in the effort, and it came out how I wanted, and I was so, so happy. So, yeah, I'm just stoked that this is something, like, a project that I've been wanting to get around to for a while, but I didn't have, like, the time or space or things like that to get around to it, but... Finally, I got onto it and it came out the way I wanted, which is so exciting. Um, I also made a bunch of other items. So when I ordered this um, mermaiding material, I ordered a bunch of it. Like, I have so much of this material because I knew that I wanted to make so many different things because I'm obsessed with mermaids. So I also made a tight, like, tube skirt. Um, it just looks like this. It's really cute. Um, it looks a little odd off, but like imagine it's tight. It just, like, pulls out and is normal. Oh, yeah, something else I want to point out. Um, I was really, like using my brain when I was sewing the skirt and I made sure to line up all the scales as best as I could. So like it's all even and stuff. Um, sometimes when you buy products made out of this particular scaly material online, um, people sew it upside down so you get a skirt that comes with scales going upwards instead of the scales flowing downwards and I really was fussy about that and wanted all the scales to meet up nicely so I just did it myself and like let me show you the back. Like, the scales all meet up nicely and um, it, like, lines up and is symmetrical and stuff. It's just, it's satisfying to me and it makes a difference to me, so I was really happy about it. Okay, I'm going to put on the tube skirt next. Um, this is kind of a different vibe to the first one. Honestly, the tube skirt, I'm just doing it off camera because um, I'm just sliding it on underneath my skirt. I've decided to take the 
shorts I'm wearing out because um, they're not gonna fit well underneath the tube skirt but um the tube skirt was kind of difficult to make because I didn't know if it was going to like fit well against the body the tube skirt was a little bit um bunchy on the sides like of the of the hips and so I was a little bit nervous about it but then I just kept altering it and like finessing it and stuff until it came out the way I wanted so you know a bit of trial and error there but I'm really stoked with the way it's come out um so I'm wearing the tube skirt underneath the skater skirt now let me just remove that top skirt so it's just like a tight kind of bandagey style skirt it's got again the same elastic for the waistband this elastic by the way I purchased from um, eBay and then as you can see the seam here lines up really nicely it doesn't mean perfectly as though this like scales went together perfectly um, because there is like a curve to this because obviously body has shape and so I wanted to like you know hug the figure rather than be a square over it because I wanted it to be a fitted skirt however I did try and make these match up as evenly as possible so that it's I don't know it's satisfying to me the way these lined up wait I'm wearing a little off center but you get the vibes like all of these things are as symmetrical as I could make them um, so I'm really pleased with the way that came out um, again with this skirt I <laughs> secretly I didn't hem this one either um, I did hem the next piece that I'm going to show you guys, but like, I'm not opposed to hemming. I don't have a problem with hemming. I just like do it by hand and stuff. But the thing is with hemming, like this material doesn't necessarily need it. So I didn't want to like give it um, an unnecessary like bunchiness or like make it look weird underneath. So um, I'm sure it wouldn't look that weird if I did hem it, but I didn't hem this and I think it's really cute. So that's what it looks like. I can pull it higher waisted, like I made it to be higher waisted. Um, just like that, but I can also pull it to be like a lower waisted skirt. So if I wanted to, to sit like that, um, the length of it is like a normal mini skirt kind of length for me. Uh, but I could also pull it to be shorter or I could like bring it down if I really wanted to push it. Maybe I could like push it into a pencil skirt even. Not entirely. It sits just above the knee if I like pull it down all the way. But like I feel like it's a really good length because it's not too high waisted, not too low waisted. I can kind of pull it up and down and like finesse it to whatever like style of outfit I'm hoping for. Um, I'm really pleased with the way this came out and I feel like really cute in it. And again, it matches this top. I didn't plan that. I just planned to get like um, items of clothing that I could layer over the top of this video. But anyway, that's cool. Um, okay, the next piece is the last piece I have to show you guys in this material today. And I made a pair of shorts. I cannot believe it. This is the first pair of shorts I've made in a very long time. One time actually I don't have them around but I made a pair of shorts when I was in high school and they came out cute but they were like sleep shorts and they were like not perfect and stuff it's like probably the first item of clothing I ever made for myself so they, they're cool and I wear them all the time to sleep but they're not like shorts that I would wear out these shorts I would wear out they're so cool um I'm really proud of these what I did to make these was I oh wait let me talk about the skirt I'm wearing first how I made that so I like had um how did I do this I think I put some sort of skirt that I already have or a dress. Actually, I think I got a dress and kind of copied the curves of the dress. No, I didn't. Oh my goodness. I remember how I did this now. Sorry, I almost pranked you there and lied. Um, what I did was I measured myself and made it from scratch. So I measured my waist and then I um, made sure that for each piece it was um, the width of my waist so it would fit my waist. And then I measured um, around my widest point, which is like the hip here. So I measured um, how long it needed to be at the widest point. And then I measured like around my knees where I wanted to sit. And then I measured the length. So I, I hope this makes sense. I literally just eyeballed it. I'm not a pro. I don't make patterns. I like don't sew for a living. Also, I didn't even use a sewing machine for all of these. I literally sewed these all by hand from scratch. Like um, I'm sure I could have just borrowed a sewing machine but like I don't know I just had fun just sitting there sewing away it was like peaceful vibes um and I was just like spending time by myself like getting creative and like doing the things that I've been like wanting to do so um yeah I had the length by waist by hips by knees and I just kind of measured so that the top would be the waist the bottom would be the knees and about halfway would be the wide point of the hips and then I just cut out with a bit of extra seam allowance of course and that was it. That's how I like cut the pieces for it. And then of course I had the elastic waistband, which is a separate piece. Um, and that has elastic inside. But yeah, I'm really pleased with the way this one came out. Um, okay, with the shorts, how I made this is I had a pair of shorts that I love from Blocks. So um, I have these shorts that I wear to cheer a lot. And they're just like the perfect short that I wanted to replicate in this material. So I just traced them out panel by panel. There are four panels on this. So two at the front and then two at the back. And so I was kind of struggling with the crotch area because these aren't flat panels. They're kind of like 
are curved so that you can have the curve to go under and around the leg if that makes sense so that was like the first time I've ever successfully done a tight pant which has that curved panel like that um, but it worked out really well and I set it all together and I tried them on and they fit and I was so stoked um, it wasn't like the easiest thing like I did feel like I was like thinking a bit to figure it out but once I figured out how to make the shorts it wasn't it's not that hard like honestly you could probably do it too. I, I reckon you could. Um, and then I did a separate waistband. I could have done um, like a waistband just attached by like folding it over and putting the elastic inside. But I was like into the habit of doing these separate waistbands because I was doing separate waistbands for the skirts that I was making so far already. And also um, the way that I was cutting the fabric, I was like gonna be short. Like I didn't want to make my shorts any shorter on the top. Um, I didn't want to make them any lower waisted by including the elastic in the panel that I'd cut so I just added an extra thing on top and again with the shorts I was really careful to line up all the sides actually let me go off camera and like I'll put them on as I explain it to you um but yeah I was really careful to make sure that all the shorts um panels were aligned so that they would be sewn together in like a way that I found satisfying and then with the shorts I actually made sure um to hem these now I know I didn't hem the other pieces but I just felt like the shorts needed hemming so I hemmed them I don't know I just felt like it suited the shorts is this boring that you're like looking at my background? I don't know. It's, oh, if you want to see a room tour, by the way, I have a room tour up on my channel if you want to like see me go into like each of these pieces you see in the background. Um, let me just like fold the shorts the right way. Um, but yeah, this is what the shorts look like. They are like pretty much shorts like I would wear to the cheer gym. Um, as you know, I do cheer, so I wear shorts like this at the gym a lot. They fit the way I would want them to. Like literally just perfect shorts exactly like my other shorts that I wear all the time except in mermaid material now they are kind of like a mid waist they're not high waisted I didn't really feel like I wanted high waisted shorts but also I wear low waisted shorts a lot of the time in the gym I just I'm a low waisted kind of person and so what I do is I just like pull down my shorts so I have the option to pull them down if I feel like it um but then I could just pull them up to be like more of a mid rise if that's what I'm into and again with the sides here see how it all meets up come on that's pretty good I was really satisfied about that. The waistband of all of these things doesn't match perfectly with the bottom, but the waistband, of course, is facing the right way. Like, the scales are all flowing downwards rather than being mismatched different directions and stuff. I do have some of that material left over still, and there will probably be a couple more things that I make with the material. I have some extra, like, cut-off bits that I might use to, like, I don't know, upgrade. What do they call it? Upcycle? Upcycle some um, tracky pants that I have that I'm kind of, like, I've had them for, like, six seven years at this point so I'm kind of over these track pants but I might stick some of this excess mermaid material on the track pants to turn these track pants into mermaid track pants I think that could be really cool um and I have a little bit of fabric left over and I put up a poll on my Instagram story of should I make the extra fabric the extra fabric into a pair of flared pants or a maxi skirt um and the overwhelming winning vote went to the pair of flare pants um, however, I just want to like take a breather before I make the flare pants. So keep an eye out for those in a future video. I am definitely keen to make the flare pants. Um, I'm just not 100% sure how I'll do it yet. What I may do instead of like making a whole new pair of pants is just add a little bit to these leggings that I have. So these are existing leggings that I previously bought from Black Milk that I showed you earlier. And what I was thinking of doing is making little cuffs that flare at the bottom that make these existing mermaid pants into flare pants just by like upgrading the leg that's like a detachable little elastic thing that I can like pull up my leg and make my leg into a flare or I can remove and just have the normal leggings because I feel like it'd be a little wasteful to have like two pairs of pants that are so similar when I could just cut a new like second half for this leg and it would still give the same vibe and like these materials they're barely noticeable the difference like it's very minimal so I really don't think it would be a big deal if I went with a new material and like stuck it onto the leg of the old pants and it'd be removable so I'd still be able to wear them as leggings and so I think that that's probably a better idea and I could like style them however I want I don't know something I'll think about and you'll probably see in a future video um here's some other stuff that I've made recently it's not as exciting as the mermaid material stuff I don't know I'm really into the mermaid material stuff um but I just made a crop top um, now, this is just like a boring one, but if you want to see videos on how I crop my tops, I have a video up on my channel on how I do my t-shirts and how I crop them and stuff. This kind of looks weird over the top of this tank top, but you get the vibe. It's just like a cropped um, yellow t-shirt. Um, I really like this color of yellow. I know it looks like my favorite color is pink from like all this behind me. My favorite color is totally yellow, like 100%.
I do like pink though. Maybe pink's my second favourite at the moment. I don't know, yellow's like hard my favourite. And then the second favourites and third favourites, they come and go depending on like who I am that year. Um, but this is a yellow crop top. It's really fun. It's colourful, it's bright and I like it. Just like a cut off t-shirt. Um, I think I actually originally received this t-shirt when I was volunteering. This is so long ago. I did this volunteering trip in Taiwan um, where I was teaching at some schools. I'm Taiwanese by the way if you're wondering. Um, and so... This was like our class's shirt, but I wasn't wearing it anymore now that I was back in Australia and obviously I'm not teaching those kids in Taiwan anymore. I'm sure those kids have all grown out of their shirts anyway. But like, I didn't want to throw it away because it's a good shirt. And so I realized that if I cut it, I'd wear it more and it would live a new life. So I cut it. Um, I've already worn it a bunch of times and it's full length as well. Okay, this is a really random thing that I made, but I'm actually really into it. So this is a halter top that I made inspired by a vintage store. So I had this yellow um, kind of not children's polo neck maybe it's just like a polo neck top and I had it for a while and I wasn't wearing it and like I was thinking maybe I should cut it up and like use it as fabric for some of my doll projects because as you'll see in a minute I'm really into like sewing like little outfits for my dolls and stuff but I didn't want to waste the whole shirt just for fabric and then I was in this vintage store and they had vintage polo tops that they cropped into halter tops and I was like hey I don't need to buy a vintage shop to do that with I have a top that I can do that with. So I just got, the, this is like a wacky outfit, but this is like a top that I had already. I cut the sleeves off, I cut the back out, and now it just like ties in the back. Imagine that I'm not wearing this tank top underneath, but it just is like a backless little halter top, and it's really cute. I don't know, maybe you hate it, but I am really into it. Um, I think it looks really cute. I can like do the buttons up all the way if I want. I can undo all the buttons. Um, and it's like more of a, like a v-neck kind of style top. I think it's really cool. Um, and I felt creative when I did it because I was inspired by this vintage store that um, I really like going to and stuff. Um, so yeah, that was a cool like little thing that I did. It's not really like a huge sewing project or anything. Like I literally just went snip snip. Um, but it was a fun way to like, recy not recycle, like give new life to an item of clothing that I wasn't really using. I don't like to have clothes around that I'm like not obsessed with. Like, I'll either, like, donate them or I'll do something like this to them. And I'll tell you about it when I do. Um, this top has, like, a little texture on it, which I'm really into as well. And, of course, it's yellow, my favourite colour. Um, okay, something else I want to show you guys. I'll come over. I'll bring it over. Um, so, there was this Monster High doll that I had and I knew that I wanted to style her differently. When she arrived, she, I think she came nude or, like, in someone else's outfit. And I was like, you're not what I want you to be. I really like... Cleo Denial from Monster High's mold. I don't necessarily like all of her dolls because a lot of the time I feel like the eyes can look very wonky or wide set too easily. Um, but this one arrived into my life and I really liked her face and so um, I thought that I would like try and like give her an outfit and redo her. I haven't done her hair yet so don't look at her hair. She is going to be a reroute later. Um, but minus the hair, her outfit is pretty much complete and I did do her face. I'll show you her face first. I'm really proud of it. This is the first time I've done a doll's face or like altered a doll's face in any way um, and liked it. So her eye makeup is pretty much the same but what I did do is I removed the eye makeup from underneath her eyes. By the way, this is a Gloom Beach Cleo originally, I believe. Anyway, so I removed the eye makeup from underneath her eye. She used to have like um, eyeliner that went both ways and then some spidery little lashes going underneath which were really cute but um, I wanted more of like a wing liner like the way that I like to wear my makeup. So I removed the bottom makeup and now she just had like a little wing liner and a little green shadow like I would probably wear myself. I gave her some blush. I don't know if it's going to come up on camera but she has some blush and then I also blushed her lips a little bit very subtly. Kind of like you know how I typically go for like a more nude lip colour. I gave her a more nude lip colour because originally her lips were green and like it was cute and all for like the Gloom Beach doll but not for the girl she's about to become. So yeah, I really like the Cleo Denial face mold for like Monster High dolls. It's probably my favourite Monster High like face mold ever, um, not considering what Cleo's face screening usually looks like. Cleo's screening, not my favourite. Her mold is my favourite. Um, screening wise, I think Draculaura wins in my opinion. Anyway, so yeah, that is what her face looks like now. Oops, I think she's really cute. Um, I painted some earrings that used to belong to... Ooh, she's on the tip of my tongue. She's purple and she's a ghost. 
Spectra. I painted some Spectra earrings. Um, it's a little lock and key, and I think they're really cute. Um, I used to think these earrings were so cool, but I didn't have the Spectra doll, but then I happened to get a doll just wearing these earrings because she'd stolen them off of Spectra. And I was like, thank you for stealing those earrings, Miss Doll, because now I'm going to give them to my Cleo. They're like really cool to me. I love how it's like a lock and key. It's like a really funky earring in my opinion. I painted them so they're um, the little key, <clears throat> excuse me, the little skelet on the key I painted with like nail polish to bring out the details of the eyes and the bow. And then on the little locket, I painted the heart shaped locket pink. And then also the little chain here and the little um, part of the key down here. Um, it's not gonna come up on camera, but I painted it with a clear glittery um, nail polish that just gives an iridescent kind of sheen, which is really cute. Um, and then for her top, I originally made her a different top and I'll show you that first, um, but I ended up changing my mind because I wanted a little bit more color for her. So I made this top for her or originally and it's really cute I'm very proud of this it's so cute right so obviously she's inspired a little bit my mermaids as you can probably tell by the fabric I'm I'm obsessed with mermaids right so I made her this little top kind of like a inspired by like Ariel's um like shell top a little bit but also like for land as well and then I put on these little diamante um rhinestone details as little like off the shoulder sleeves and then also um this little three dots in the middle I like cinched it together to give it a little like shell shape and then um, I put these little rhinestones in the middle. I'm just really proud of this. I think it's really cute and I made it with Velcro so like you can open it and close it and put it on any doll and like it fits a range of dolls because I put like lots of Velcro in there so it can fit like really tightly on like a Monster High doll or you could open it a little bit wider and it would fit like I don't know maybe like a Bratz doll or something um, so you know it can fit a couple of different girlies and I really love the way this came out. Um, I made this out of a piece of ribbon um, that I think I got this from my boyfriend's family. So they have heaps of this ribbon that they used for wrapping their Christmas presents and every year <laughs> after Christmas they give all the excess ribbon to me because they know I use it for stuff and I flipped a ribbon like pretty much in half sewed it together and made a little tube with it like this so that's a ribbon just folded in half and then I sewed it into a tube and I used a length of that tube to wrap around the doll to measure the like the size of the doll so like that much ribbon you know turns into the top for the doll so yeah that's how I made this little top that's what it's made of um, but then I decided I wanted her to have a little bit more of a dramatic top um, this was really cute and like very, very pretty. I'm really into this, but I wanted her to have something pink. So I got a pink hair ribbon. So this was just from like a literal $2 store. They had like these hair ribbons and I wanted a big dramatic bow like coming off her back. Um, so I wanted to all incorporate the like shell style of this while also having like a big dramatic bow coming off her. So I did the same thing at the front of the top just with the little cinching and little rhinestones. And then instead of like having Velcro or anything, I just tied it around her in a giant bow and left the like little um, loops of the bow kind of sticking out a little bit. Um, maybe inspired by like a, a Japanese style bow. You know how um, in Japan um, on like a kimono, you might have like the bow at the back to like, I don't know what it's called. The like the board that ties it all on. I think that looks really cool. And so I've been seeing a lot of Japanese fashion on, um, just like random magazines and stuff that I've been reading recently online and I was inspired by like the way they have the detail at the back as well and I also think it's just a bit very pretty and girly this is also inspired inspired by a bunch of stuff um, but I just like the idea of having the detail at the back and I liked having the long ribbons I purchased a specifically longer ribbon so that she could have this draping down her back like this really dramatically I just think it's really nice in my opinion and then I made her a skirt as well now this skirt is a really fun material I think I've shown it to you guys previously on this channel but it is a mesh material um, it looks like this on one side so it's like silver um, on one side it's supposed to be rainbow and you're supposed to use this rainbow like oil spill as the outside but I like the silver more I just think it's more subtle um, and I think it's honestly more reflective I don't know I just think it's cooler with the silver outside so I got this silver um, like scale rhinestone not rhinestone silver printed metallic detail scale mesh fabric and I made her a tool skirt um this came out really nicely I wanted to give her a really full skirt for more of a dramatic ball gown look and it came out beautifully now I'm not going to be hemming this because um I don't think that hemming tool looks that good like I think tool looks good when it has that raw edge I don't know it just gives to the vibes of the tool in my opinion but I didn't want to leave it raw at the top so I did line it in little rhinestones so around the top of her waist it's all rhinestones um it's all like pleated or whatever um bunched up ruched 
through the whole thing so it's got that like great texture that I was looking for from this it kind of reminds me of a giant fish towel while also being like you know a princess bull gown while also being a mermaid it's like I'm trying to incorporate a lot of vibes that I'm into into one doll and then it just velcros up at the back which you can't see because it's hidden behind the doll stand but it just velcros onto her really easily um and yeah I'm really into it underneath it's still like the rainbow but I like the um silver side on top I feel like it goes with the diamonds and everything that she's wearing more I'm thinking about like adding more to her but like I don't think I should do anything else for now I think I'm just gonna reroute her hair first and then you'll probably see her in a future video once I've rerouted her hair um because I want to give her like brown hair I feel like it'll be nicer this hair that she's currently got it's like the tinsel hair I don't like the way that it has no center parting um yeah there's a lot going on I don't think she has a center parting no, I just don't like this hair. There's a lot going on with it. I did make her a little headpiece. So once she does have her hair, um, I feel like that's going to look really pretty on top. But yeah, I don't like her current hair, so don't look at it. It's like, it's tinsel and it's not the way I want it to be. Oh, one last thing I did do to this doll is I did paint her nails. I don't know if it's going to come up on camera, but she's the cutest little pink nail polish. It's so cute. Can you see her toes? So cute. I have some shoes for her. Oh no, I remember, I specifically don't. I remember I like sorted out the shoe problem. So at first I really wanted to get her some shoes. I really want to get like, okay, the dream would be to get her Laguna's Dawn of the Dance shoes, but Laguna Dawn of the Dance is a really expensive doll. I actually saw her on Gumtree for very cheap, but she was in a doll lot and I didn't want to buy like literally 50 dolls um, just so that I could buy Laguna Dawn of the Dance just so that I could steal her shoes off her. So I ended up deciding to give her no shoes because... It's like she's a mermaid and she's just come out of the water and she's got her cute nail polish. Like, it's not like she's got weird looking feet or anything. Like she's got like normal feet. Um, she's got like human feet and she's excited about them. And so she's not wearing any shoes because she's got her like, I don't know, like the barefoot vibes. She's a princess running through a castle. She's running along the beach. I don't know. There's a lot of like made up stories that I'm thinking about. Um, but like, I just thought that the barefoot was fine and I probably won't be able to get my hands on the Goon Adorn of the dance shoes. But maybe I'll get some like, custom resin shoes for her one day or something like that that'd be a cool thing to do but it's kind of expensive for like how much I don't know that's I don't know if it's really worth it for me but I do think she's really pretty ignore her hair and I love her I love how her eyeshadow happens to match the color on her skirt that's why I did it to this particular Cleo I really just love the way Cleo's face sculpt looks I think it's really fun and I hope I can do another custom Cleo in a future time um what else have i made recently i did get the rest of that excess material and like i'm starting to make that into a tool skirt that's something you'll probably see in a future video but like obviously it's just two bunches for now but like i'd like to make this into like a mermaid tool skirt for myself or something like that be cool project to do um you've seen previously i made my um like mini me of a barbie and a brat doll so the barbie she's like a little acu cheerleader like because I do cheer, I wanted to make my little um, mini me's like cheer girls as well. And then I made my little Bratz doll mini me um, a little ECA cheerleader. So I'm really happy because I've got to like have two different dolls from like two, I don't know, they're not opposing brands, but like two different like styles, you know what I mean? Um, in my two different uniforms. So they like, I got to showcase both my uniforms in mini form um, and like have a go at making them. I do have videos up on both my mini me Barbie and my mini me Bratz doll. Um, they were lots of fun to make and I was like really excited to finally get them complete. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean when I haven't been here on YouTube as much recently. It's because I've been working on like other little random side projects on the side that I've like kind of been putting off or like need to think a little bit before I like attempt them, like making these shorts. There's a bit of there's a bit of plotting involved because I've never made something with a leg coming around like that before. Um, but yeah, if you have any um, suggestions of things that you think I should make that I'd enjoy making, I'm obviously only making these things for myself. So I'm making things that I'm going to enjoy like wearing or that I'm going to enjoy making and then playing with. Like this is something that I'm going to enjoy just seeing on my shelf and be like, wow, she's pretty and I made that. Um, your top's falling off. Maybe she needs some of the shoulder sleeves. I don't know. I've been thinking about adding those little rhinestones to of her shoulders, but I feel like it would detract from the bows at the back. I want that to be the focus. Anyway, um, yeah, those are the things that I've made recently. I hope you enjoy this kind of like different style haul. Um, if you did, you know what to do. You can give this video a big thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. You can subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Also, something I always forget to add is you can join my channel as a member. So what you do is you click the join button down below and it's a paid thing where you pay. Um, there are different tier levels and you can pay more to see more from me. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm ever going to leave my channel the way I'm like talking to you guys now. I'm always going to be here for free, like normal YouTube. Um, this subscription kind of thing is more just if you'd like to see even more from me or you would like to like support me more or anything like that. Um, I don't know what I'd do with the money. 
buy some more material and sew some more things to show you guys. I don't know, but like that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to see more from me, you can hit join or just subscribe. Find me on all my socials. I'm Emily Titch or Emily Titch 20 everywhere. Um, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, Visco. I really need to get uploading on Flickr. I'm really excited to get more on Flickr because I feel like there's a great doll community there. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Also, I know my things that I made weren't perfect, but like, I'm just like having fun. Okay, yeah, bye.